Good afternoon, guys. Today I am going to give a brief demonstration on lead, melting lead, procuring lead. Um, I have vast experience with lead. Uh, as a plumber, I've been pouring lead joints for over 22 years now, and I've gotten plenty of burns out of it. You know, I got some really nice, nasty ones from it. I get more from soldering than anything else when the you know, customer's got water in the line and you can't quite get the water out and get solder and you know, stuff like that and it explodes on you. But lead is a little bit different. It does not tolerate water when it boils um, or you're melting it. It will explode on you. So I'm going to get you in a little closer here, show you what I got, and uh, we'll take it from there, melt down some, get it ready for ingots, and get it ready for a smaller pot. Stick with me, guys. Okay guys, here's what we got. Got a lead pot, this is cast iron, uh, on a, my old turkey fryer system. Um, some of you guys may have these in your house. You may not know what they are. These are called lead drum traps. Um, they're usually found on your tub. This is about 25 pounds of lead right here. Okay, it's usually solid except for the bottom might be a metal plate which doesn't really matter you'll get rid of that anyway you got your lead waste on them so that's another 25 30 pounds of lead they're pretty solid but they do bend and that's why they were used as just running arms for drainage I collect these things up I have here this makes four ingots at a time you're gonna need a lead ladle to scoop out your lead out of here and then you're gonna come up with a bunch of these lead bars uh, about a pound a piece they fit smaller into a, a small cooking pot to pour bullet molds making jigs uh, anything in fishing that requires lead uh, from weights all the way down I have just about every mold you can think of for that sort of system I have my bullet molds for 50s and 44s which is a 454 actually for a 44 um, but we're gonna melt some of this down like I said I got a whole bucket full over here guys I mean you're talking a lot of weight in there we're gonna make some more so let's get started on this get the pot going and everything else stand by I'll get it cooked up and we'll show you how it's done okay we're uh, cooking here just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on some stuff here when you're doing this okay be very wary of water but there's all kinds of lead okay there's crappy wheel weights which are more tin than anything else um, there's lead pieces like oh, some of these are really goofy uh, this is just part of a waste arm but there's counterweights for underneath sinks you know on the hoses for the sprayers and stuff don't trip on, oh, that's not clean lead. And I'm going to show you why. It's, it's lead melted about 800 degrees or so. We get this thing hot enough, you'll start seeing it start to melt. All the scum will float to the top. I keep a pretty crappy spoon here. We'll scrape it off, dump it off to the side. Then what we're dealing with is pure lead. Um, like I say, though, the, the wheel weights, though, there's a lot of tin. You will see a lot of scum floating on the top from that. But because these were drainage pieces, and I mean, there's lots of them. I cut this one out yesterday. Um, you know, this is an old drum trap. Uh, but there's there's pieces in here that are copper or brass, and like this one here, there's brass on the back end. This is a waste arm from a um, kitchen sink. I'll use all the lead on this, but throw away the waste arm or trade it in for brass or copper, whatever. This looks like it's uh, brass. We'll get rid of that. Like I said, don't worry about the scum on the top. You're just going to scrape that off. That's waste. That's You've got to figure there's going to be a lot of waste inside these old uh, pipes. And that stuff will all float to the top. The lead will sit nice and clean on the bottom, but you'll get a look at it when I get to it. It takes a little bit to melt this down. Once you get it started and the lead is really hot, you can pretty much feed pieces into it one after the other. I'm starting to melt up here on the side. 
Yep. All of this is melted at the bottom. It's just working its way towards the, the top here. And like I said, you're going to get scum out of here. That's a no-brainer. But that's scum. You just get rid of it. Dump it off to the side. You might lose a little bit of lead in the process, but hey, it is what it is. It's free lead, free bullet molds, free, you know, wheel weight or free uh, weights for fishing, spinner baits, whatever you want to use it for. But this is fairly easy to do. Uh, as you notice, I'm not wearing safety glasses. I don't really trip on that aspect of it too much. I know what this stuff will do. Um, I know to keep the water away from it. I'll probably put on some when I get to scooping it. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Let me melt down a bunch of this and then I'll show you the scum on the top. Okay guys, melted some down. I'm going to show you how that process goes. But you can see all the scum on the top. This is all the impurities. What you're going to do is take a spoon, get it out of your pot. Comes out real easy. You just scrape it across the top, no effort, no nothing. Get it out. I tell you what, when lead gets really, really hot, really liquefied, it will melt other lead real, real fast. So I'm going to show you that. I was playing around with this piece, melted some down. Um, we're going to get a glove on because it does get warm, guys. It will get a little bit warm to the touch. But I'll show you something here. And then you just, you're going to hear sizzles, and that's all the crap that's inside this pipe and the paint on the outside, and it's going to sizzle off. I don't know if you can hear that. But the lead starts melting down pretty fast. And then as soon as I lift it up, you're going to see a lot of impurities come out of this. See all that garbage floating in there? No big deal. Like I said, we'll get rid of that in a few minutes, and we'll scrape that off too. You can hear the sizzle. That's grease that's all kinds of scum that went down the drain over a period of years no big deal the lead will melt off around it the scum will stay on the top what you want is almost pure lead it's gonna be about as pure as you can get it here don't worry about the paint on there same flavor it's an impurity it will come off they we're already we're already melting paint I would suggest you don't do this indoors. I don't know, I don't see why I would have to say that, but you never know, somebody might actually try it. Uh, nowadays, you gotta be careful about what your information you're giving out. But see, scum, it comes off the inside of the pipe. No big deal. As long as it's not completely soaking wet, you probably wouldn't have an issue with it anyway. And things like this, I mean, I know this one, this, this drum trap probably has a little bit of water in it from yesterday. So I might just put that off in the garage, let it dry for a while, evaporate all the water off, and then come back out, chop it up with a saw, feed it into the lead pot, get myself some more ingots out of it. I think right now I'm currently sitting on about 350 pounds of lead. Um, and when I say lead, I'm talking once it's all the impurities are out of it. You can hear that stuff just boil in there. See this scum coming out? Not really that big of a deal, guys. It'll just work itself down and melt it all, melt it all down. Okay, I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit, and then we'll get to the pouring portion. Stick around, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back again. You can see this pipe is pretty much melting down by its own and it's still sizzling a lot of garbage inside that thing so that has to you pretty much have to heat that but no big deal we're almost down to what we need to get it over and done with and the scum will come out to the side and there's a lot of it like I said where can you get free lead <laughs> it's probably all around you and you don't even know it that's the funny thing about uh, looking at plumbing situations. A lot of lead was used back in the day. A lot. It's probably in 90% of the homes that you can find it. And then you just take the scum, get it off to the side. Scrape it 
scrape the bottom of your pot when you're doing it. Any scum that's down there that, you know, got stuck down there will come up. Old soot. And what you're left with is about as pure a lead as you can get. And don't worry if you waste a little, it's not. This stuff is fairly cheap. As a matter of fact, you can go get lead just about anywhere. Um, I know they still sell it because our plumbing test in the state of Illinois requires a lead project to be done. And uh, a lot of guys fail it. But I'm a Chicago plumber. Um, former union plumber up in Chicago, trained by some of the best guys, men who know plumbing like it's nothing, you know, it's no big deal. And up in Chicago, they have different codes. You still have to pour lead joints. There's a lot of places that they won't let you put PVC in. But now we're going to get to the pouring aspect of it. And what I did is I put a vice uh, grip on my pan here. I'll back you guys out a little bit so you can watch this going on. We'll get at it. Okay guys, you see we got lead now. Like I said, I'm wearing a glove. I haven't put on the glasses yet, but I'll do that just so I don't get the naysayers going, oh my God, you don't wear safety glasses. Dude, like I said, 22 years of doing this, I know what this stuff is gonna do and what it's not gonna do. Now you're gonna need a ladle. You get your little pan here. Some guys will say, get this pan hot. The problem is, I'm not actually trying to make this a liquid in here, so Cooler is better for me because then it solidifies real fast. And then you take yourself out of scoop. You start filling up your individual pockets. And one scoop should pretty much do the whole thing. You let it sit for just a second. I'll tell you what. This stuff will cool outside the fire real fast. And then all I'm going to do is dump it over. Let it continue to cool outside the pan. It's about... done and then you can continue to do it over and over and over till you're just really tired of pouring lead for a day but the little pieces the little ingots I have a cooking pot inside the house that uh, requires smaller pieces than what you normally get and uh, can't put a big chunk of this stuff in there it looks like we got some more scum coming up to the top here just get rid of that that in my other mold. Take out some more lead here. Nice and shiny. Nice and pure. Let that sit for a second. We'll dump it out again. In the meantime, run what I consider short on lead. I mean, I like lead. I like a big pot of it. We'll just get this in here. Get this melting down. Like I said, this has got some brass in here. And this is the way they used to do it, lead arms, stubbed out with brass so that you can make your connection to your kitchen faucet. Still probably done in, you know, it's not done anymore, but, you know, you probably can find hundreds of houses in your area. Anything prior to 65, I think you'll probably find this stuff still in the wall. Lots of drainage systems have this kitchen sinks, bathtubs. And anything that isn't lead is not going to melt. Brass has a higher temperature. It doesn't melt. Well, this is a dirty little one. Be very careful though to make sure that nothing is wet. And see what I'm left with is just my brass arm that gets sold off as scrap when I get enough brass. We are bubbling and boiling here, folks. Take out some of the scum.
can do this for a couple hours and have hundreds of pounds of lead melted out again. Thing is though guys, I don't use a lot of it that much anymore for um, making bullets. I got probably, and this is no lie, I'm 50 caliber, probably 2,000 rounds of 50 caliber already. 44 caliber, probably five to 6,000 bullets already made up. Uh, I got a buddy who I sent some lead to because I think he was buying tin, mostly tin, just, just in the watching him of pouring it on video and uh, making bullet molds on video. I said, boy, that's an awful lot of scum for what looked like a clean bar when you dropped it in there. If that's the case, you got a lot of tin in that. Uh, tin does not melt like lead and leaves a scum coating on the top because it's not going to melt down like lead. And that's what you want to get rid of. But I'm thinking, boy, if you're shooting tin down a old muzzle loader or even, even some of these modern muzzle loaders, you will screw up your rifling in there. Because tin obviously is harder. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll send you some. Believe me, this, this takes nothing for me to do this. And you really can actually have fun doing it. Like I say, don't do this inside door, indoors, guys. Your wife will flip. You might burn the house down. Um, and it does stink a little bit. But uh, that's my little lead tutorial for the day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll have a really nice day. There's the end result, guys. It's just two things. I didn't melt down the big pots and stuff, or the, the actual drum itself. But I got, I don't know, 20, 30 more of these things. A little bit warm to the touch still. Five more bars. Now you tell me what you can do with that. You know, like I said, guys, try to look around your place. You may actually find out, and your wife will love you if you do it. You take out the old drum trap and you put in a P trap, like what's underneath your kitchen sink, and your tub will drain ten times faster. And you're actually getting something out of it, so don't throw it away. Put it to use. That's it for the day, guys. Y'all have a nice day.